So. Okay. Three, two, one, action. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Today we have a very special treat. Today, I am in the photographic art space in which the renowned photographer Frank Stefanko works. Frank, how you doing today? Good, John. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I am so... Uh, I didn't get my morning coffee yet, but... Uh, well, we call it morning coffee, but we don't supply you any. Uh, oh, so it's actually deprived of coffee show. I was under the impression I was going to get a cup of coffee. Uh, uh, we got people for that. Uh, Jimmy, can you make, uh, make that happen? Thanks, Jimmy. We have a lot of people working for us behind the scenes. Don't be fooled. But in front of the camera, this is such a treat. Now, Frank and I are old friends, and uh, Frank is... A renowned photographer who is very very well known for his work with some musical celebrities like Patti Smith and Bruce Springsteen and uh, so I just got to say uh, Frank it, uh, tell us a little bit about the work that you're involved with well uh, I've been photographing for most of my life uh, when I was a kid I started out with uh, my father gave me a box camera looks like a box and uh, I started taking pictures when I was eight years old, and uh, never stopped. It just fascinated me. I loved it, and uh, you were hooked. You caught the I ball. I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. So I was taking pictures, and as I grew up, uh, I was listening to a lot of music on the radio. Um, in the old days, it was anything that came on the radio: classical music, uh, polka music, uh, country western music, the hit parade. Uh, rockabilly, it didn't matter, whatever came on I was listening to it and as I got older and uh, the British invasion and the rock and roll started to become more prominent in my life uh, I started going to rock concerts in Philadelphia living close to uh, the Philadelphia area and um, I would bring my camera with me and I started taking pictures of oh, Rod Stewart, uh, Led Zeppelin, the Rolling Stones uh, you know, uh, you name it uh, so uh, it turned out that two great loves, my love of music and my love of photography, married together. And I was able to start uh, doing photographs of musicians. Uh, as it evolved back in the 1970s, um, actually in the late 60s, I met a young lady in college. She was a friend of mine. Her name was Patty Smith. We were going to school at Glassboro State Teachers College. It's now called Rowan University. Uh, and um, Ultimately, Patty left and went to New York and became a, a famous poet and um, rock star, an artist, photographer, a painter. Uh, she's won so many awards. Uh, her book, uh, Just, Just Kids, a few years ago, won the National Book Award. And, uh, you know, she's, she's quite, quite uh, revered around the world. So I was taking photographs of Patty in New York in, uh, in the uh, mid, early to mid 60s or 70s, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, ultimately Bruce Springsteen saw some of those photographs and thought that uh, my photographs of him would be a good idea for his album called Darkness on the Edge of Town. So I had the book cover or the record cover for Darkness on the Edge of Town. Two years later, I was able to have the record cover for The River and um, that was back we started in 1978 for darkness and we've been friends ever since and I've been working with them ever since now it's almost like uh, which came first the chicken or the egg you were hanging out with Patti Smith rock and roll legend before she evolved into this great icon for music you knew Bruce uh, got involved with taking his pictures before these amazing albums captivated listeners across the world I mean, you were like one of the original rock and roll photographers growing into this whole music scene with the artist. Well, you, you hang around long enough, John, and, <laughs> you know, uh, people remember who you are, I guess, eventually. But there were a lot of great uh, rock photographers. Uh, many of them are passed on, like Al Wertheimer, who photographed Elvis Presley when he was 21 years old. Uh, David Garr, who photographed... Uh, the second Bruce Springsteen album, The Wild, The Innocent, and The E Street Shuffle, uh, and many others out there. But the, there are also some contemporaries that are friends of mine. Uh, Eric Miola, who shot uh, uh, the Born to Run album cover. Danny Clinch, who does a lot of work with Bruce now, contemporarily. A great photographer. He's photographed all the bands. 
uh, Bob Gruen, uh, Mick Rock, uh, to just to name but a few. Right. Uh, but they're all friends, and uh, you know we sometimes get together at uh, gallery shows in New York and and just kind of uh, say hi. But yeah, uh, well, I've been to one of your gallery shows yes. at, at the Morrison Hotel in Soho, yeah. and. I tell you, if you want to go to a, an amazing photographer's gallery where some amazing people show up, uh, Frank's galleries are phenomenal. Like uh, it was packed from wall to wall, <laughs> and I know that your work has been displayed in galleries and museums all over the world. Can you name just a few? Yeah, I'm uh, fortunate that my work is good enough that uh, many galleries have taken on my my work in the world. Uh, Blender Gallery in Sydney, Australia, uh, Morrison Hotel Gallery in New York City in Soho on Prince Street, and there are two other locations: one at the uh, uh, in in Los Angeles in West Hollywood, at the Sunset Marquee Hotel, uh, and another one at uh, Mick Fleetwood's Emporium on in in Maui uh, in Lahaina, Maui. Morrison has three locations. Also in L.A., I'm represented by a few other galleries. Uh, Mr. Music Head and um, and Fahey Klein, going east. <laughs> yeah, take us in, east. In London, <laughs> uh, Snap Galleries Limited in the Piccadilly Arcade in London, uh, Wall of Sound Gallery in Alba, Italy, and um, uh, the Photo Gallery A B in Halmstead, Sweden. So, you know we. Uh, we're a little bit global. <laughs> I mean, and here you are, you know, chilling in New Jersey. You seem so serene and so calm, but you get to go to some magnificent places because of your art. Well, we are both, uh, Carol and I are both fortunate, my wife Carol and I are both fortunate that we can get to go to all these places uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, have gallery shows and to meet people and uh, meet some of the fans. But it's also fortunate that we can travel to do I mean, the rock and roll pictures are, are well, wonderful. They're my life. There's, there is, this is the cover of uh, Bruce Springsteen's The River. Oh, yeah. Um, which is one of my favorite shots. Uh, and we've done so many different things. Um, Bruce's new uh, autobiography, uh, Born to Run, I was fortunate enough to get the cover uh, for that. This picture was taken locally in Haddonfield, New Jersey back in 1978 during the darkness uh, on the edge of town shoot. Uh, these are all great things, but in our travels, we also like to, you know, the confines of photographing uh, rock stars, whether it be at a concert or in a portrait type of format, uh, we also like to get out. And we're, we're, there's no footprint of man out in the out in the wilds, out in the open air. And look, I've got to attest to that. I've been with Frank on one of his shoots, and it's not just a shoot. It's an expedition. When you go <laughs> on a shoot with Frank, you better be ready for a survival expedition because you go, you go places go out where, where people don't always yeah. are welcome to go. And and I know that you have a, a one line. of my favorites is Monument Valley. Oh my goodness! Out so in uh, Arizona and uh, Utah, uh, beautiful place where all those John Ford, John Wayne movies were uh, filmed. Uh, just I mean, when people look at these places, they see. This is what a Western movie for uh, background should look like. Uh, this is an, on the island of Kauai in the Hawaiian Islands. Ah, good old Kauai. I love these places. This is this is a swamps in in Florida in the Everglades. Uh, we just Carol and I go here often. It's the origin of life. It's it's the primordial ooze coming out. You can you can smell life just you know beginning. Uh, it's 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 so rewarding and spiritual oh, this, man. this is a this is a chopi in the florida everglades but there are other places here's an interesting this is part of the 12 apostles in port campbell on the southern part of australia where um these monoliths are out in the water there were originally 13 of them some of them have have crumbled since because that's the whole key to these landscape photos nothing is forever and mm -hmm. we have to protect mm -hmm. our national parks it's very important. People are trying to infringe and encroach on the national parks, and we don't want this to happen. These are wonderful, beautiful places. Let's keep the footprint of man out of these places. You see this? You're standing on the on a cliff, overlooking the su the Great Southern Ocean, and the next body of land is Antarctica. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty cool feeling, you know. It's pretty sensational. 
Um, I love what you said about the preservation of our parks and lands. Absolutely. And, and you really shown, I mean, you're almost taking us back to a time before we really spread the globe and, and polluted a lot. And uh, and uh, if you just look behind me at this wall, this is a this is a wall of history. And you can just see how Frank's work has just been uh, iconic in the music industry. Uh, I myself am fortunate to have uh, have Days of Hope and Dreams, a special copy signed by my friend. <laughs> And uh, I love this. My pleasure. It, uh, the Meadow Square Garden, December 18, 19 cover. Let me tell you a story about that one, John. Please that's, do. That's interesting. What you there got? was a time when I was in New York, hanging out at the Chelsea Hotel, West 23rd Street. Okay. Uh, trying to give away my photographs so people would know who I am. <laughs> so here, Bruce is at Madison Square Garden, 1980, during the River Tour, which I did the cover for the River. And um, I... I got a bunch of tickets to go see him at Madison Square Garden, uh, and I went, uh, invited some of my friends, my artist friends from Soho, and we cabbed up to the, the garden. Uh, and I got out, of, got out of the cab, and my friends are with me, and I looked up at this building, this gigantic wall, this building, and you see how big that poster is? Yeah. There must have been 200 of them plastered all over this wall in New York City, and I'm saying, I'm trying to give my photographs away so people will know who I am. Now they're plastering the city with them. <laughs> you know, this is good. This is a good thing. You know. That was a great concert, too. I'm sorry. For no, you know what? I love that history. And look, uh, it's pretty amazing. And like, you know what people love about a lot of, well, one of the reasons people love your work is because you somehow remove the celebrity element that can be associated with the artist and just get the raw person. And you can just see it in your work. Like you just get the regularness in him just hanging out. Oh, were you reading uh, Bruce's new book? Uh, his well, it, it just I so think, happens. I think it says here back on uh, 269, <laughs> which Carol has. Uh, yes, yes. He, where he talks about uh, uh, Frank's photographs were stark. His talent was he managed to strip away your celebrity, your artifice just like what you were saying, and get to the raw you. His photos had a purity and a street poetry to them. They were lovely and true, but they weren't slick. Frank looked for your true grit, and he naturally intuited the conflicts I was struggling to come to terms with. His pictures carried the people I was writing about in my songs, or captured the people I was writing about in my songs, and showed me the part of me that was still one of them. We had other options. But they didn't have the hungriness of Frank's pictures. That's Bruce's words. Yes. Th that is Bruce Springsteen giving Frank props. And you have been to concerts of Bruce's. You and Carol both have now been at Bruce Springsteen concerts. Mm -hmm. Like, I look for him at, uh, at uh, someplace local, but local concerts for you is probably, I mean, why bother? We, we, like, you've been to some of his shows where? Well, we, uh, we, one of the greatest shows was in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden, 2012. It was several years since Clarence Clemens, his saxophone player, had passed away, right. and there was a classic uh, song of Bruce's called Jungle Land, where there was a tremendous saxophone solo, uh, very haunting, uh, just gets right to your marrow. Mm. And he hadn't done that song since uh, Clarence had, had, uh, had passed away. So I was there backstage. Bruce, uh, somebody was running up the hall, says, uh, Jake, Jake, uh, Bruce needs to see you. Uh, Jake Clemens is Bruce's nephew, who has replaced Clarence Clemens in the band. Okay. And um, apparently they had a meeting. Now, I had no idea what this was all about. Okay. Uh, Danny Clinch and I were in, uh, and Carol, we were in Sweden for a, a, a two-man photography show okay. in Gothenburg, and we also arranged to go to the, uh, to the concerts at... Uh, Ulevi Stadium, which is this huge stadium in Gothenburg. Must have been 70,000 people inside, another 20,000 outside, just waiting to, you know, just so they could hear the concert. Right, you know? can't even see him, just and, to hear uh, it. Danny and I are on stage, and uh, uh, I was photographing Bruce, and, and uh, I, I knew something was going on because uh, during this song, 10th uh, Avenue Freeze Out, where he um, uh, introduces the band members, and he said the change was made uptown and the big man joined the band right. and, he, and he looks up and there's no Clarence and he had this look on his face and uh. he's done this before and it was part of the, but there was something special that night and after that, the next song he introduced, 
He said, this is the first time we're going to do this uh, since, you know, Clarence Clemens has passed away. And they did Jungle Land. And it was so emotional. Oh, man. Uh, Stephen Van Zandt had turned his back to the audience and just folded his arms. He just couldn't handle it, you know. And, oh, my goodness. Uh, but but um, Jake nailed it. He got that solo in. And uh, and it was kind of the the passing of the baton. Yeah, but, and, and look how you know, and it took a long time for them to even be able to get to yeah, that point. Yeah, it was we too emotional. There. It was too emotional. That was a very special moment at uh, a concert we we saw, and and I photographed in Gothenburg, Sweden. I also saw him this summer at uh, San Siro Stadium in uh, Milan, Italy. Milan, uh, okay. So uh, yeah, I was in Milan doing a show at the Wall of Sound Gallery in Alba. And uh, the next day we went to Milano for the concert. So, so you get around just a little bit. Yeah. J just a little bit. I mean, <laughs> you were showing me pictures uh, that were pretty amazing of you and Carol hanging out at an event in New York City with just a few people that uh, people may recognize. I was, me. Steven Spielberg, yeah. Tom Hanks, yeah, yeah. and of course Bruce Springsteen. But what was that event? Well, uh, as you know, I did the cover for Bruce's autobiography. Uh, right. Born to Run, which uh, I'm very proud of. This is a very special uh, thing for me. And uh, I was invited to come to the celebration party in New York for the success of the book, which has gone, you know, number one, bestseller list. It's national. It's out in many, many, many languages. It's all over the world. Right. My, I was talking to my friend Patty Smith uh, not too long ago, and she said, uh, Frankie, everywhere I go in the world, I see that photograph. You know? <laughs> so I was fortunate that uh, Carol and I went up to New York, and uh, I was told Bruce is going to be there and some of his friends and uh, uh, some of the Simon & Schuster people who published the book. And uh, right. So we did and went up and uh, saw John Landau and Barbara Carr from Landau Management. And uh, we saw um, Jonathan Karp, the president of uh, Simon & Schuster, and some of the people that I worked with on the cover. And um, then I'm, I'm looking around, I saw uh, John Landau came in, and uh, next I saw Clive Davis, the great record mogul in New York, and uh, uh, I said, whoa, <laughs> Clive Davis is here. And then, then I nudged Carol, I said, wait a minute, uh, here's Stephen Van Zandt and Maureen, you know, his wife. And, and, and then I looked in the crowd, and I said, no, it couldn't be. I said, Carol, look, that's... That's Steven Spielberg <laughs> and Kate Capshaw, his yeah. wife. You're still and, amazed yeah. at the people I said, wait a minute, circle. you know, this one, uh, you know. Uh, and then the, Robert De Niro came in with his wife. And and uh, and then Tom Hanks came in with his wife. And Ralph Lauren came in with an entourage. And, you know, I I, I just said, whoa, this is like... How I get into this A list party? I'm just, I'm just a guy from South Jersey, you know. That's what I love. I love how humble you are, um, and your your wife is fantastic. I've known Carol a long time, and I'm just very happy for you both. And uh, um, you're lucky. I know you have another interview today to do today, yeah, so you. there's no time for me to take you down in chess. No, no, no. You can't do that. You've done it too many times. I'm, I'm embarrassed already. This guy kills me in chess. He's a great chess player. Don't play this guy ever in chess. But. Um, what I was getting to with the with the uh, book signing party and all, it, it just um, uh, you know it was it was an amazing thing because I was able to photograph all these great oh. people at this party, which is being added to my book that I'm working on. Yeah, tell us about uh, your book. Well, I'm, <laughs> I did a book uh, years ago uh, called Days of Hope and Dreams, uh, an intimate uh, portrait of Bruce Springsteen, uh, and then after that, a few years later, we did. Uh, Patty Smith, American artist, but um, uh, it's been quite a few years, and I have been photographing Bruce all these years since 1978, almost 40 years. And uh, I, I was thinking, wow, maybe you know, I, I have a, enough material that I want to do another book. I, I'd love to do another book. And my friend Guido Harari, uh, who's an, a world-renowned photographer in Italy, um, and um, he just put, he just put out his new gigantic uh, book call, called uh, uh, a Kate uh, Inside a Kate Kate Bush okay. book great book uh, and he's working with me well he, he sent me an email and he said uh, I think it's time you did a new book on Bruce Springsteen you haven't I think you have enough material and I said you know what I said you're a kindred spirit but now you're <laughs> reading my mind you know uh, you know so next thing I know he's on a he's on a plane he's coming here. Going through all my negatives and slides and, and 
digital material and uh, memorabilia, and he says, oh yeah, we've got a book, you know. And this is great, because this is all the stuff nobody else has seen yet. Well, some of it is vintage stuff that you've seen, Okay. a, 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 a small part of it. Okay. A, a bigger part of it is vintage stuff that nobody's seen, because oh. they were they were never published. They were outtakes. It looks, it's from the same, you know, area, but they were different uh, images. Right. But then we've taken it completely further. 1978, we did the... Uh, in 1980, we did the uh, darkness and river shoots. Then we went to 1982 for the Nebraska shoots. Okay. Then we went to 2004 for a big shoot I did up at his ranch in, his, in Colts Neck, New Jersey. And then we went to 2012 for a lot of um, uh, concert footage, 2016. And I'm still working on getting the 2017 shoot so we can finish the book. Uh, but it's, it's shaping up beautifully. It's going to be a very big book, and it's only going to be a limited edition book. Okay. Uh, it's, we're only making 1,978 uh, copies, because that's when I started working with Bruce in 1978. That Three, right 350 of them are going to be deluxe, I'm, I'm sorry folks, but very expensive <laughs> <laughs> editions with all kinds of extra stuff in it, and then the rest of them will be a little less expensive, but uh, these are not what you call trade edition books. These are not $30 books. These are, it's going to be very large, many, many pages, very big in size, very gorgeous, several mm -hmm. different kinds of papers. It's a collector's edition. It's going to be signed and numbered. Uh, it'll be signed by me and numbered. And what is the working title? The title is uh, Bruce Springsteen, Further Up the Road. Um, we started way back down that road years and years and years ago. And now we're moving further up the road. Well, Frank Stefanko, I want to say it was such a pleasure to have you on Morning Coffee. All right, Brock. My friend, good to see you as always. <laughs> Shaka. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.